Hello everyone, this is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com and host for Resurrect the Republic RTR Truth Radio broadcast. Coming to you with some new updates as to what is going on in Las Vegas, Nevada and the Bundy protest standoff trials, as well as some more information that is coming out of Oregon, out of the Mauhir National Wildlife Refuge trials as well. So the first thing that I would like to go over with you before we even touch base with that is so that you understand that your unalienable rights you are born with from your first breath. And with that being said, with that being said, I want you to understand that the Bill of Rights is not really a Bill of Rights. It is actually a Bill of Limitations, and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by that. I know most individuals know their their Bill of Rights. However, a lot of people are under the misconceived notion that they have what is called a constitutional right. You do not have a constitutional right. You have unalienable rights that are solidified and guaranteed for the federal government not to be able to touch in that federal constitution in the Bill of Rights. So the Bill of Rights gives you and grants you no rights and it limits what the federal government is allowed to touch. It is extremely important that you understand the difference. So to prove this point, I am pulling up the Bill of Rights and we're going to go over the first 10 amendments and that's all I'm going to cover and then I'm going to get to the news about uh, Nevada and Oregon as well. So if you can see the First Amendment, it says Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. Why is this so important in the Bundy situation and in the Mauhir situation as well? Because what they are trying to do is they're trying to attack attack the right of the people to peaceably assemble. When the people are peaceably assembling, we're not talking about riots like what happened in Ferguson. We're not talking about riots even like what happened over um, at Berkeley this past Friday um, in California. We're talking about individuals that, yes, they were armed, but they were not pointing weapons at anybody and they were not a threat to anybody, law enforcement included. So your your right to peaceably assemble is being under attack, and it is under attack by the same federal government that does not want you to be able to petition your government for redress of grievances. All of this in Malheur stood and, and stemmed from the mistreatment of the Hammonds. The Hammonds were the last ones standing on the land grab, and the federal government, through way of the BLM was trying to obtain that property for the resources that were on that property. The natural resources on that property are what the federal government wants. When you do a lot more digging and researching, you understand it is connected to the Clinton Foundation, to Hillary Clinton, and to the Uranium One situation to where uh, she or the foundation um, was linked to stealing approximately 20% of the American people's natural resources. So the right to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances, plus the freedom of speech and of the press, and is being violated. Now, it also says that Congress is not allowed to prohibit the free exercise thereof. Now, mind you, this says Congress. This is where it becomes tricky. In other words, they're not allowed to create any laws that would establish a religion across the board over all of the states. They are also not allowed to prohibit the free exercise of freedom of speech or of the religion. 
they're not allowed to do that but it limits the federal government it does not limit the people and so let's go to the second amendment one of the most favored amendments of patriots and and supporters of liberty a well-regulated militia comma being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed there is a reason for commas in those situations the federal government every federal government law that has to do with firearms is unlawful is illegal and thus should be nullity in and of itself they are not allowed to actually infringe upon any of those rights we'll go into greater detail later what infringe means because when you understand infringe and bear in the pure sense of the word back into the era of when our founding fathers were then you understand that any laws any of them uh, is an infringement and it is note noteworthy to note also uh, for anybody who wants to claim that that's just for the militia that is completely incorrect it's if you notice it doesn't say the right of the militia to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed it's a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state in other words you can't have a free state without the militia being well regulated as well as the people keeping and bearing arms which means basically to keep it on your person you have a right to do that you were born with that right that was not granted to you in the Bill of Rights the Bill of Rights is actually a bill of limitations it is what the federal government is not allowed to touch of course the third amendment is where there is no allowing of uh, the quartering of soldiers no soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner nor in time of war but in a manner to be prescribed by law the fourth amendment of course is search and arrest the right of the people to be secure in their persons houses papers and effects against unreasonable search and seizure shall not be violated it doesn't say um, may not it says shall not absolutely not be violated and no warrant shall issue in other words you're not supposed to be able to obtain a warrant but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized it is important to note probable cause is supported by oath or affirmation in other words you need an affidavit of truth sworn to be true and correct under penalty of perjury for that probable cause many times they try to go well probable cause is well I thought that is not probable cause not in the truest sense of the word anyway even though they have tried to flip it on that end the Fifth Amendment of course protects the rights of the defendant in criminal cases it does not protect the right of the government it the government has no such right the people are who created the government in the first place and let's be specific we cannot be anti-government because we the people are truly the government the uh, federal system that calls themselves the government are simply our employees and our servants thus they are bound by um, the limitations of that contract so in the Fifth Amendment no person shall be held to answer for a capital which means murder by the way or otherwise infamous crime unless on a presentment or indictment of a grand jury except in cases arising in land or naval forces or in the militia when in actual service in time of war or public danger nor shall any person be subject for the same offense to be twice put in jeopardy of life or limb nor shall be compelled in any criminal case to be a witness against himself nor be deprived of life liberty or property without due process of law nor shall private property be taken for public use without just compensation now the Supreme Court and other courts as well have trampled on these rights over and over and over again how many times have you seen where the courts have allowed the individuals 
who have not even gone through the trials yet to be deprived of their liberty. It is unconstitutional. How many times have you seen individuals deprived of their property without a trial and without due process of law? Plenty of times. The Supreme Court and other courts have upheld, and that doesn't mean that it is right, but it is the truth. They have upheld such things as using that. And, of course, that is unconstitutional. But we have to also remember these are your unalienable rights. These are not rights that are given to you in the Bill of Rights. These are rights that you were born with and you've had since your first breath. These rights are just solidified and written down on paper of rights that you already had from your first breath. So in the Sixth Amendment, the right to a fair trial, which is one of the things that has been issued and has been one heck of a, a stirring up, whether it be the Bundy trial out in Las Vegas, Nevada, whether it be the situation out in Oregon in the first place. The Hammond case is one of the things that fueled the Malheur Wildlife Refuge protest that was going on because they were, um, double jeopardy was violated. They had already done time for a backburn, although none, and I do mean none, of the Bureau of Land Management that have set fires to uh, public properties and have actually caused houses to be burned down, cattle to be burned alive, put people's lives in danger, um, have not been charged with anything whatsoever, and the Hammonds created a backburn in order to stop a fire, and they already served time for that, even though that's absolutely insane. In the first place, they should have never been found guilty in the first place. So then when the, they wouldn't sell their land to the federal uh, bureaucracy that, wanted, that wants these natural resources and through the corrupt politicians pushing and, and the ones who are involved and very, very closely connected with what is going on, they then decided that they were going to re-do um, their sentence because they did it under a terrorism act. And I find this absolutely appalling, disgusting, and downright shady. And there's some other words I can think of, but I'm surely not going to say them because uh, thank God Jesus uh, takes care of my mouth. That's all I will have to say on that. But the situation with that is it's not only unconstitutional and unethical. These things are being allowed to go on all while at the same time groups such as Antifa go around or, or Black Lives Matter go around and destroy property, attack people, physically assault people, burn down buildings, burn down businesses, um, they do all sorts of manner of crazy things. And of course, we know this is all Soros connected, but that's still irrelevant. The point is, none of them are ever charged as being quote unquote terrorist. Yet, peaceful people who protest just because they had a sidearm on or they had a redress of grievances to their government whom refused to listen. And um, the corruption goes all the way to the top, people. Um, with that being said, it is absolutely disgusting. And the reason that they can get by with violating the constitutional um, confirmations in the Bill of Rights of your unalienable rights is because under the NDAA in 2012, they have a right to hold American citizens without charge of trial. And they have a right to do that if you are declared under being a domestic terrorist. So this is why they keep on with that false narrative of the domestic terrorist issue. So also, in the Eighth Amendment, it's talking about bails, fines, and punishment. Excessive bail shall not be required, nor excessive fines imposed, nor cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. The rights retained by the people, which is, of course, the Ninth Amendment. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. 
the Tenth Amendment, which of course is states' rights, the powers that are not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. So it is very important to understand that even in the Seventh Amendment, it lets you know that in suits at common law where a value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved. No fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. So yes, even in the Bill of Rights, it lets you know about the common law. They don't want you to know about that either. So what I wanted to let you know, what I have found out so far, John Lamb has put a message out and he know that the jury still has not come back with a verdict. Today is, of course, April the 18th, 2017. And as of this evening, the jury has not come back with a verdict um, on the situation in Las Vegas, Nevada, which is a really good sign. This means the jurors are really looking into the situation. The, the jurors are really digging into this case. And I think what is going on, and I think the federal government is, is really nervous about this, is because the longer it takes, then it is obvious that there is a situation that is arising that is not maybe going in their favor because they're actually doing their job, they're questioning, um, they're going over evidence, they're not taking it lightly, obviously, which I am very thankful for because it is the, the duty and the responsibility of a jury to not only hear the facts of the actual case, of the individual case, it is also the duty of the jury to protect individuals from an overreaching government. In other words, if there is any part of that code that um, they're being charged with that's unconstitutional in the first place, it is the duty of the jury to nullify that because that is how we keep our checks and balances and it is actually up to the people to say, no, we're not going to deal with this unconstitutionality and um, we're going to stop you from attacking our people on doing such. So, also, I wanted to update you a little bit. There is some news that has come out about the Oregon situation. So, as reported on March the 11th, 2017, in the Oregon situation for the Oregon occupation trial, two people were convicted and two were acquitted of conspiracy in Oregon occupation trial. Now, I'm going to go through this article really quick. However, it's a, it's really a sad day when that could even happen in the United States of America, especially when already Ammon Bundy and Ryan Bundy and the others were uh, found not guilty um, on the conspiracy. And so now individuals whom were there... Um, two of them were found guilty on that behalf and uh, it just goes back to the right to freely assemble. You have a right to redress of grievances, you have a right to freely assemble, and you have a right to protest. That is not something that the federal government or the state government gives you. You have a right to speak out, to speak truth. And that comes from your living being. That comes from your soul. You have that unalienable right to speak out and to speak for truth. And um, so here's the update. A federal jury on Friday delivered a split verdict in the second Oregon standoff trial, finding two defendants guilty of conspiracy in the takeover of the Malheur National Wildlife Refuge, but acquitting two others of the same charge. The jury found that Jason Patrick, described by prosecutors as one of the organizers of the armed occupation, and Daryl Thorne, who worked on security details, guilty of conspiring to prevent federal workers from doing their jobs at the refuge through intimidation, threat, or force. The other two men on trial, Dwayne Elmer and Jake Ryan, were found not guilty. 
The jury, though, found both Elmer and Ryan guilty of willfully damaging the refuge, depredation of government property by using a refuge evacuated excavator to dig two deep trenches early on the morning of January 27th of 2016. The jury also found Thorne guilty of possessing a firearm in a federal facility but acquitted Patrick and Ryan of the same charge. The seven women and five men deliberated for two and a half days before returning their verdicts in a U.S. District Court in Portland. Their decision follows the October acquittals of Ammon Bundy and six co-defendants in the same conspiracy and weapons charges following a five-week trial in the 41-day refuge occupation last winter. Bundy, his older brother Ryan Bundy, were considered among the leaders of the occupation. Patrick, who said it's turkey hunting season where he lives in Georgia, made turkey calls in the courtroom before the judge or jury entered, prompting a deputy U.S. Marshal to tell him to cut it out. So who's getting tased? blurted out Matthew Schindler, a defense lawyer from the first trial who sat in the back of the courtroom to hear the verdict, referencing the bizarre ending to last fall's trial when Ammon Bundy's lawyer was taken into custody and stunned with a taser. U.S. District Judge Anna Brown ordered defendants, their lawyers, and spectators not to react when the verdicts came in, not audibly, not in behavior, no reaction, or they'd be removed from the courtroom. The prosecution sharpened its case this time, zeroing in on how the actions of the men on trial revealed their intent to intimidate several, to intimidate federal workers and explaining the jurors didn't need to see a formal written or verbal agreement to find a conspiracy. But the irony that the government sneered some of the more minor players versus occupation instigators wasn't lost on legal observers. Just about everybody would agree if you look at this from the perspective of overall justice, it's kind of hard to square an acquittal in the first case and convictions in the second case, said Kevin Solly, a Portland area criminal defense lawyer not tied to the case. There is baked into our justice system a lot of imperfection and unpredictability. It is an unfortunate, unfortunate but accepted fact that doesn't always produce results that are correct or just or even fair. Trials are inherently unpredictable, Sally said. In front of the federal courthouse, Elmer said he was disappointed that now I'm a felon, but was looking forward to returning to Aragon in eastern Oregon in the interim before sentencing. Mm -mm -mm. I'm headed home to go ride my pony for a couple of months, and then I'm going to take my mom fishing. That's about it, he said. Elmer was a common sight at the refuge riding his horse, Hellboy, and hoisting the American flag there. Billy J. Williams, the U.S. Attorney for Oregon, and Lauren Cannon, special agent in charge in the FBI in Oregon, both praised the verdicts. I bet they did. I bet they did. Can't wait until they are actually put on trial for the stuff that they are doing. The defendant's effort to sow discord here in Oregon among residents, business owners, community leaders, and law enforcement personnel have failed. Williams said in a statement, Our communities and state are stronger because of our joint effort to bring these individuals to justice as we, as Oregonians, can now begin to move past these unfortunate events. Mm -mm -mm. Cannon said the U.S. Constitution gives all of us freedoms. But it also comes with responsibility to respect the laws of this nation. We don't live in a perfect world, but we do live in a great country. I encourage those who want to make it even better to act in peaceful and lawful ways to inspire lasting and positive change, unquote. Well, I have something to say for this canon. The U.S. Constitution does not give us any freedoms, Mr. or Mrs. Cannon, because I do not know uh, whether you're male or female. We have a duty to respect the Constitution, not your statutes. And we are not a nation. We are a union. We are a union of many states that gather together in agreement to help protect each other. We came together in compact. We are also, that is one of the reasons why your state has a constitution. Constitutions are laws that govern a nation. 
So your state is a nation state in the in way back in the day statement nation. We are many nations joined together in unity known as the United States plural not the United State of America. This is why you also have different states that have their different laws and why the states have the power which the federal government does not want you to know. And if you do think that you are one nation, then we are under only one law, which as you well know, is not true. Not only that, ask yourself this, if we are a nation, then why does the president every year come out with a state of the union address and not a state of the nation address? There is a reason. We are free, independent, sovereign states, otherwise known as nations, joined together in unity for the whole of the United States of America. Corrine Suckling, executive director of the Center for Biological Diversity, said in a statement that verdicts bring a measure of justice to the dangerous thugs who used violence, threats, and guns to seize public lands that belong to the birthright of all Americans, unquote. Well, they are part of all Americans, and if it is the birthright of all Americans, and that is the public land or the property of the people, Mr. Suckling, who is... Um, the director of the Center for Biological Diversity, and I would almost bank on it that somehow that is connected with another UN Agenda 21 plan, that that doesn't just mean select few that get to be on that land. If it is public land, it belongs to the whole, not just to the ones for Center for Biological Diversity or other people, other people during that protest whether they were pro Bundy or whether they were not pro Bundy actually went out to the Malheuri refuge and had absolutely no problems whatsoever visiting and enjoying that public land now I also have something else to say article 1 section 8 clause 17 federal government's not allowed outside of their 10 miles square I'll show you that in a minute as soon as we finish covering this the outcome followed a 10-day trial before the U.S. District Judge Anna Brown. Prosecutors described the case as a simple one. Defendants took over someone else's workplace and made it their own. Amazing! Their posting of armed guards at the refuge gates and watchtower, the creation of security squads, and the visible presence of guns on the property intimidated U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or U.S. Bureau of Land Management employees from doing their jobs. Really, because the last time I checked the Malheur Wildlife Refuge, all the time has individuals that go out there with their weapons, camp out, and actually hunt. This is regular practice out there. The only reason that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service or the Bureau of Land Management uh, became scared was because their higher-ups or the bosses higher up put fear in them the bosses are the ones who told them you can't go to work because of your safety none had received threats from anyone at the refuge to my knowledge and if there was show it and prove it because I'm not buying it I watched what was going on live Thanks to Pete Santilli, who is now also a political prisoner over in Las Vegas, Nevada, for covering the 2014 Bundy Ranch standoff. They do not like independent investigative journalists or bloggers that will actually cover the real news. Because if you have that, then the media can't spin that real narrative. So then, you know, they have been going after individuals like uh, Pete Santilli, like Thomas Lacavera, as well. Um, it's just a really sad day 
in in our union and the problem with that is is and i understand that mr trump is uh president trump is doing things that uh are on a positive note he's also doing some things that are very concerning some things that are unconstitutional no matter what side of the spectrum you're on we as someone who stands for um, truth and reporting and truth about what's really going on we have to be willing to say hey take a step back look at this this needs to be really dug into because certain things it doesn't matter who whether they have a R by their name or a D by their name or even if they're an independent it doesn't matter if you are in an office in which you're supposed to be serving the people of the United States of America and you want to make America great again let's start with America and quit worrying about everything over in the foreign section I mean I understand that some people are in panic mode about that however you need to understand it's unconstitutional for us to be in Syria in the first place period period no excuse they didn't palm us so it's unconstitutional there was no act of Congress there was no declaration of war it's unlawful it's illegal period years ago when Barack Obama was president Syria asked for the help of the United States of America and the only help that the United States of America gave Syria was arming funding and trading more Isis Daesh Mujahideen Al-Qaeda whatever you want to call them Isis ISIL IS the whole nine yards and helping the terrorists to try to overthrow President Assad well now is supposed to be a new day President Trump you ran on make America great again in order to make America great again we've got to drain the swamp as you said and draining the swamp is not just in Washington DC it is also these federal judges and some of these local judges that are connected to that that is part of that swamp system according to article 6 they have to have good moral turpitude and they have to and are limited to by the Constitution of the United States of America so therefore if they are in violation of that they can be removed you cannot sit there and say well this judge was appointed and we just can't remove them because they're appointed for life even though you know they're making decisions decisions that Hitler would make not accurate not true completely false they can be removed because of their actions and warring against the Constitution itself and when you are going against the Constitution and you're making up your own rules and you say that the Constitution is not allowed in my court but that is the oath that you took and the oath that you swore to defend and protect and you are not doing that you then are warring against the Constitution of the United States of America and against its people and thus you must be removed so President Trump I'm asking that we drain the swamp the real swamp that is attacking the the people that you've never had the the ability to meet some of the greatest people that are out here in the United States of America that fight every day for your rights for my rights and for my children and my ch grandchildren's rights for the right to the freedom of speech they work very hard to expose what is really going on in order to not only get the truth out there but also to support you so that you will know the truth and what is really going on you are not going to get the truth from the neocons you are not going to get the truth from those mainstream media fake news accounts in which they spin everything and you know that you know that mr. Trump because you yourself have dealt with that they have tried from inside to set you up 
and they've done the same to some really great God-fearing people that love America and everything that was supposed to be America stands for. Mr. Trump, I ask that you support abolishing the unlawful, unconstitutional, illegal Bureau of Land Management the EPA, the DOE, Department of Education. All of them are unconstitutional, illegal, and they attack each and every individual's liberties and rights. If you truly want liberty and freedom, get the federal government back in that 10 mile square where it belongs in the first place. And you ask me, what do I mean by that? Let me show you. Okay, Article 1, Section 8 of the United States Constitution. I'm going to go to Clause 17. By the way, this is what the legislative branch, this is the powers of Congress. That's it. Right here, this is what the federal government's allowed to, to cover in the legislative. So we're going to go to Clause 17 so that I can show you. Do you notice they're allowed to make rules for the government? It didn't say for the people. It says they're allowed to make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. It doesn't say of the people of the states. They're allowed to regulate and make rules for the government and regulation of the land and naval forces. In other words, over the military, over the ones of that. Providing for the calling forth of militia to execute the laws of the Union. And they're right there, just once again reiterates, we are not a nation Get out of that mentality. We are not one nation. We are many nations joined together in union. Suppress insurrections and repel invasions. All right, right here. To exercise exclusive legislation in all cases whatsoever over such district not exceeding 10 miles square, as may by session of particular states, and the acceptance of Congress become the seat of government of the United States and to exercise like authority over all places purchased by the consent of the legislature of the state in which the same shall be for the erection of forts, magazines, arsenals, dockyards, and other needful buildings. Okay, so that 10 mile square is the District of Columbia. They're not supposed to be outside of it unless it is a place that is purchased. Now, not only does it have to be purchased, it has to be purchased with consent of the legislature of that state. There is not one piece of evidence that has been provided that shows that the federal government purchased anything when it comes to the Oregon Malheur National Wildlife Refuge. Now, it has to be for the erection of forts. Okay, well, nope, that's not what that was. Magazines, nope. Arsenals, nope. Dockyards, nope. And other needful buildings, nope. Well, I'm sorry. I seem to have missed in here where they're allowed to own land outside of the 10 miles square. So what you need to understand, all right, is the equal footing doctrine. The equal footing doctrine means before the state became a state, they were a territory, okay? And when they were a territory, when they decided to become state, they um, 
went to and uh, asked Congress if they get permission to join the Union and become a state. When they became a state, they had the equal footing as the same as the first 13. Now, why is that important? Because once a territory becomes a state, the territories are what the federal government was holding that land for the people. Once they became a state, the government no longer had control over that because it is no longer considered a territory anymore. Thus, it is a state or a sovereign nation. And thus, the federal government no longer had any authority or any rights in there. The way that they're getting by with this stuff is through contracts. It's that simple. Anyway, I'll go through more at a different point in time. However, that is the latest update that I have. I want to thank you for listening to my updates. Thank you very much for subscribing and thumbs up. And thank you for all of the kind messages that you all are leaving me. I want to say hang with me. I've got more news that's going to be coming very soon. So hopefully you had a really, really good weekend. God bless you. Semper Fidelis. And as always, watch your backs and check your facts. Good night.